You're listening to the Her Paper Root Podcast, episode number 11. We are talking about when you know it's time to quit your job and make a big career change and transition into something different, whether that's into a new job or becoming your own boss and creating your own business. Joining us on the show today, we have Crystal Barrow from Shape Your Success Coaching. Crystal helps dissatisfied employees ask for the salary that they deserve, make a career change, and find fulfillment in their job. She also helps her clients manage the emotional weight of going through a career transition. She's going to be sharing some tips for how to figure out when it's the right time to quit your job and then what to do then. If you're ready to make a big change in your life, then you have to listen to this one. You're listening to the Her Paper Root Podcast, a show all about money and entrepreneurship with host Chelsea Clark. Chelsea is a marketing strategist and the founder of HerPaperRoot.com, a friendly and supportive hive for ambitious, passionate entrepreneurs like you to learn how to growth hack your idea into a profitable business. We encourage you to fearlessly tackle your wildest goals. We know that as your own boss, you can deliver your unique message and make more paper. You just need a plan. Here's your host, Chelsea Clark. Welcome to the show, Crystal. Hi, Chelsea. Thank you so much for having me today. And I'm excited to dive right on in. (laughs) Yay. Thank you so much for being here. You are a law enforcement officer turned lawyer turned career coach. (laughs) Yes. What has that transition been like leading into your profession as a coach? Yeah, I mean, it's first of all, it's amazing. Um, And career transitions can be so um, up and down, a little bit crazy. How do you navigate it? But honestly, I think um, there was a little bit of luck in there in terms of landing the jobs um, or the right people, being in the right place at the right time, but also lots of disappointments um, along the way. So really having to learn a lot about myself, about what it was I was wanting to accomplish, figuring out how to do these things um, and going for it, even if I didn't have prior experience in it as well. So um, it's always a topic of conversation and, and usually inspiring for others to just go for it, no matter what it is that they're wanting to do. Wow. So you've been through those ups and downs many times. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know more about how you help your clients with this. Absolutely. So thanks, Chelsea. So I work with primarily professionals that are in, like you said, dissatisfied with their job, or sometimes they actually like what it is that they're doing. And they're either looking to maybe level up in that same um, company, organization, agency, or in the same industry, but maybe doing something different. And so it can really vary. But for the most part, um, I'm working with men and women who want a change, who, whether Whether that they've kind of done or laying up at night kind of wondering, you know, is this it for me? Should I be doing something else? Or maybe they've always wanted to do something else. Something is tugging at them. But quite frankly, it comes down to just a lot of fear and a lot of not knowing what to do, where to get started. I help them with the technical skills. Of course, we talk about resumes and cover letters and the job search and salary negotiation and all of these things, networking, of course. Um, But also the coaching aspect comes into play when people need that support, emotional support around the roller coaster of making a change in and of itself. So I kind of combine those two. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the emotional impact on people when they're making a big career change like that. I love that you help them with the technical aspect of going for a new job, Mm -hmm. but also the emotional aspect of what comes with it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It tends to be the missing piece. When I go back and I've talked to people I've worked with or just talking to people in general, it's like they feel like they kind of know the what to do sometimes as far as, okay, I know I have to go online. I have to apply for jobs. I am going to have an interview. I should probably prepare. Um, They know the steps that might be involved, but they most often find they don't have the support or they feel like they're alone or they're not getting feedback because of the black hole, the resume black hole. And like, is it me? Am I doing something wrong? So yeah, it's so important to offer that too. I've I've come to find out. Yeah. What are some signs that it may be time for someone to rethink their current job position? 
Okay, so this is, I'm going to keep it totally real here because I've definitely have been there and done that. Um, so some of the signs early on might be, you know, if you're unhappy, if you're unhappy in the position, maybe you're starting to take longer lunch breaks so, or you're doing disappearing acts. Um, maybe you're getting frustrated with an, everyone and anyone around you. Maybe you feel like the writing is on the wall. You're starting to get poor performance reviews or warnings, you're that you didn't get your bonus. More obvious signs like that, sometimes it could just be, uh, again, that you're laying up at night or something's tugging at you and you just know that there's something else you should be doing. If you put money aside, if you put the fact that maybe you're the sole breadwinner in the household aside, or if you put aside the fact that you have three or four children that you have to send to college, um, et cetera, then what is it that you would do? And everyone kind of has their breaking point. I mean, you know, you just kind of know when you're starting to get a little antsy, if you're daydreaming at your desk or you're starting to do a job search, which is a no, no, but doing that job search at work. <laughs> Um, so you're spending more time on the internet, you know, things like that are um, certainly some signs and symptoms. Um, so checking in with yourself, seeing how you feel. Are you, of course, the Sunday scaries are always a sign too, right? That Sunday evening, you're like, oh no, I really don't want to go to work tomorrow. Sure, right? Sure sign. And it could be different degrees. Right, but everyone I find um, has that point of, okay, I have to make a change and the, and the time is now. They could, most people too, Chelsea, are like, they sit on this feeling or this, um, they're going to work feeling miserable um, or feeling like they don't have a voice, they're not being uh, chosen for promotions and things like that. And they, they don't do anything for years. And so, yeah, so years can go by and it's like, oh man. And so of course, hindsight is 2020, right? We, we look back and we say, man, I should have done this a long time ago or what held me back, but it's quite common. And so a career coach um, can certainly help kind of have you kind of really look at those things and then see what's holding you back and then just say, you know what, it's time to move you forward. How are we going to go about doing this together? That's great. I've definitely been guilty of that in past jobs where I start applying to different jobs from my desk at work using my company email. Like oh, I've yeah. just already <laughs> moved on in my brain. Exactly. That's ex that's it. Exactly. Already moved on in the brain. That is a clear sign of, you know, you're not putting 100 percent in, you're no longer productive. And sometimes a boss will even pick up on that. I've, I actually had that. This might be the first time I share this. I have actually had uh, an employer's uh, supervisor actually sit me down and we had a good rapport and I was just feeling, I th I'm not, I don't remember exactly what was going on, but I started taking like the, a Friday here and there, a Monday here and there. And that's another big sign. And so he actually sat me down and he said, Crystal, he said, I don't know what's going on, but he said, I'm noticing a lot of Fridays, a lot of Mondays, you're extending that weekend, what's going on? And so another sign when you start using those days to no end, to avoid even going in, you know, there's usually something there you got to check. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like any excuse you can come up with to not have to go in or like mm -hmm. you say, the Sunday scaries, you get that pit in your stomach. What, yes. What's yeah. going to happen today? What's going to happen today? Or, you know, what, what, and, and it's particularly, it, it's, it's difficult too, because sometimes you're, you might have a difficult boss or your rapport with your boss is not what you would like it to be, or you're seeing other people advance or maybe advance over you. Um, or maybe you got the position that you want it, but now you're having trouble succeeding or setting a foundation for success in that position. That's another level of stress um, that can have you question, even though you think, oh, I got the promotion, but now you're your manager, for example, but you don't know what that means and you're not getting guidance to assist you or set you up for success. And so now you're questioning your decisions. So many different factors come into play. So if someone is unhappy with their role at work, how should they go about figuring out what they would enjoy doing better? Maybe they're at a place where they know that this isn't working, but they're kind of scattered and they're just not sure what to do to take that first step. What would you tell them to focus on first? 
Great question. And this might be different for each person because we all kind of digest and process things differently. Um, but typically speaking, when, when someone is really at that point of, all right, let me try to figure this out. I'm really not sure. And a lot of the clients I work with, they are not sure where to, where to what they might want to do next, or they have an inkling. And if there's even an inkling, I say start there. Um, start of, you'll, and most people too should check in with their values. So this is something that coaches will use as an approach. Um, and I've been trying to share this message as well, because it's kind of the last thing that somebody will start to think about, but it's one of the most important. So what do you value? What do you like? Are there things that you like about the position that you're in? Are there strengths and skills that you can leverage um, so that you going forward, you can really maximize and cash in literally on those things and going into your next move so that you don't feel like you're just going to jump from one um, position into the, a similar situation. Also kind of brainstorming, just do a brain dump of, you know what, I've heard about this. Um, maybe that would be interesting. Some people have um, a hobby, what's something that might be a hobby right now, but they might be able to monetize it. So maybe doing some research or talking to people. For me personally, the brain dump onto paper has worked. And then also talking to people about that are doing what it is I might want to do. Because now I'm just even finding out the inside scoop. Is this a good thing? A not so good thing? Is it a possibility? Those kinds of things. So seeking out people that you trust, um, known and unknown even, even unknown contacts you can tap into through someone. Most people will feel comfortable if it's an introduction potentially um, that can just get your brain rolling around what might be a good fit. And then certainly once you have that kind of a little bit more of a focus there, so you can start doing researching the jobs that are online. Um, nowadays, so one job could have had a title 10 years ago, five years ago. And then now you look up at that same, you look up that same position and it's got 10 different titles. So just even familiarizing yourself with the current trends, what the titles are for the positions or, or job descriptions that you might be a good fit for you, things like that. And then progressing into diving into a full on search and or transition. Um, but for the most part, just taking a step step back, relaxing about it because squirrel brain can be either uh, stressful because it is you've got a thousand things going on, or it can actually help you as fuel to figure out what you want to do when it's crunch time. As entrepreneurs, we all know how important it is to build our email lists and using a powerful email service provider is important, but raise your hand if you're like me and you are getting tired of being charged more by your email service provider, the more subscribers that you get. It's almost like you're being penalized just for successfully growing your list. Well, that is why I'm so excited to get to tell you about Flowdesk, because with Flowdesk, you can manage all of your newsletters, funnels, and opt-in forms, just like every other email platform. But get this, they charge one low flat price forever. There's no tiered pricing system. They never charge you more as your list grows. With Flowdesk, you get unlimited subscribers for just $38 per month. But her Paper Root podcast listeners get an even better deal. Go to herpaperroot.com slash flowdesk right now to lock in unlimited subscribers for just $15 per month for life. How amazing is that? Well, I'm about to make it even more amazing. When you go to herpaperroot.com slash flowdesk and sign up for a paid plan, I will enroll you in my premium email marketing course for free. So you can learn my step-by-step -step formula for growing a list to five figures and monetizing it as a business with useful email marketing strategies. So you can be excited to sell to your list without feeling salesy. To get all the details and to get your Flowdesk account for $15 per month, go to herpaperoot.com slash F-L-O-D-E-S-K. And I can't wait to have you in my class. What do you say to someone who maybe has a mindset block thinking that they can't afford to make a career change? 
Oh, good question, Chelsea, because this comes up and it has even come up in my um, in my career transitions um, and in other like big life events. So it's always and it's it's not cliche and, and maybe some people feel that it is, but it really is all about the mindset. And when I work with people, that is I really try to gauge where they're at um, and what's going on in that brain emotionally, maybe even spiritually, what's happening around the current situation how it's impacting them and affecting them because all of that plays into how you are going to show up for your search or your transition, whether you will show up for it, you, it can hold people back from even getting started. Um, and so I'll check in with them with their permission to just even kind of gauge where they're at currently with their permission. I'll explore. And as a certified coach, I'm, I'm trained to not only just actively listen to what people are saying, but what they're not saying. Right, Chelsea? <laughs> so because of that can give valuable information around um, the uh, blocks, the blocks that you might have, whether it's financial, for example, just as you uh, mentioned, or some other reason. Now, financially speaking, um, I'll share that, for example, number one, it has it always comes up with career transitions, particularly if you're going from a six-figure or, or a high-level position and you're looking to do something that may not, where you're going to take a hit, in essence. Mm -hmm. And so some people are perfectly okay with that. Maybe they're looking for a lifestyle change. And so they want to go from working 80 hours to working less, many less hours than that, much, you know, much more um, time and flexibility to either be with family or just have a life or enjoy the money that they were making. Um, and so definitely kind of considering whether or not what their financial what their numbers are um, and kind of just having the information generally tends to make people feel a little bit better about whether it's a possibility or not. Um, but it can hold up a lot of people. I think if they see that there's possibility, for example, to maybe take a hit going into your next move, but, but there's potential there to grow. Um, and that happened for me. I had, was in one role. I, I went from one role to a, a different role and took a $25,000 a cut in salary it was very scary. Was I'm not going to say I was doing some assaults about it, but I also knew what that next role meant for my my career, for my experience, and things like that. And so there are definitely some benefits. And then I made kind of the pros and cons and list, you know, uh, and kind of worked around that. Also, in terms of just on a personal level, how do you handle, I'll have people tap, um, tap into prior experiences where they've taken, quote, a, a hit or a loss and how they bounced back from that. And having people tap into that actually can move them forward as well. Yes. Yeah, so, so that's really um, interesting because that's just talking and that's conversation. And you can you can really open someone up to really seeing that, you know what, maybe I can make this work. And once I have someone saying, maybe this could work, <laughs> then we then I'm, I'm like, all right, we're going for it. We're going for it. Um, in my own personal life, I decided to become a single mom by choice. And um, my daughter's three years old. So in 24, she was born in 2016. So when I was making this decision, I was thinking to myself, along with a lot of other things, of course, how in the world can I afford this? How in the world am I going to be able to provide for my daughter, raise my daughter, um, provide for myself? Like just all the money um, questions were coming about. And I just decided to go for it because I weighed the advantages, um, weighed my desires, my desire to become a mother and how important that was for me personally. And so with someone in their profession or in their career, what are your goals? What is, how do you define success? And if you get, get really clear on that, Chelsea, if they get really clear on that, then everything else that they have to kind of work out winds up working out. It's just how things happen, whether you call it God, the universe or whatever, things start coming into play. Yes. Right. For me, when I had my daughter, I wound up 
uh, transferring to a new location that was closer to home. And that location where I was working had daycare in the building unbeknownst to me. Amazing. Things start to come together. Um, so yeah, all about mindset and uh, essentially figuring out what's important to you, define what your goals and success means to you. And um, if you're willing to go there for it, it is possible. It is absolutely possible. That's great advice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and it seems like you really love what you're doing. You're really passionate about your career. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I made big switches. You know, people, I don't get the same uh, reception I'm used to when I when I told people or my mom would tell people, oh, yeah, I'm a lawyer. She's a lawyer. Everyone's like, oh. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I still have my degree. I'm still an attorney. But at the same time, um, and that is a passion. That was a passion of mine. But it served a different purpose. We had a different reward for me. I, I served the state of New York and, and the there's nothing better than that. But on the other side of it, I realized I was tapping into my talents as I was making career changes and transitions. I was talking to people in the business. Um, I was listening to little whispers and intuition. Intuition is huge, right? Mm -hmm. Intuition coming into play yeah. um, and decided, you know what, this, I think this is what I'm meant to do. And it doesn't mean I have to shut off everything else or that everything else um, is discounted. And a lot of people feel like, oh no, if I make a career change, what about all this, the, the years I put into this? What about all the money, the years of school, the degree or the experience that I have? Like everyone's going to, you know, I'm going to be judged on what if I fail, all those things come into place. But the fact of the matter is if you do the work beforehand, and you don't do it alone. You get someone to help you and realize that you're not alone. You have support. When you reach that point where you're actually doing what you're called to do or what you feel is meaningful and impactful on your life or, and or someone else's, then none of that other stuff even matters in the end because you're on cloud nine, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that is just the best. And you can deal with those down days. There are, there's, I don't want to give the impression that, oh, I've, I've found my purpose and everything's all hunky-dory. Absolutely not. There are definitely still scary days and days that you, you know, might doubt yourself, but because you're doing what's what's good for you, um, you're showing up better for your family, for your friends, for others. You're probably having an impact. You're probably feeling more purposeful. And so you're better equipped to deal with the days that you're not feeling 100% on your A game. You bounce back better, those kinds of things. Yeah, so that's why I am so passionate about saying, give yourself a shot. Give yourself the chance to see, and you can always course correct and make a different change, or make a different choice, or change things up a bit if you have to. Oh yeah! And as an entrepreneur yourself, what inspires you to power through those tough days? Ooh, Chelsea, timely and good question. <laughs> um, it's tapping into my why. It's really, um, it's something that I have my clients go through when they're talking about a change or even um, on, on a smaller scale, their next career move, whether it's just nine to five to nine to five, nine to five to starting a business, leaving the business and going back into the workforce, um, making sure that that they, and then for myself, understanding why I even did this in the first place. Um, I left my nine to five job last February. So coming up on a year. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And um, on the days where I'm not feeling a hundred percent confident or on the days I'm worried um, about whatever comes up for me on a particular day, I tap into, you know what, I, I felt called to this. I know I'm being guided to do this. And um, I, I, for me, it's sometimes prayer and or meditation. I find a release. Um, I make sure I have a support system, whether it be a Facebook group that I know has a really engaging community and I feel safe in, or a coach that I've hired to assist me on my own journey. Um, uh, absolutely. My mom, who's super, very supportive and kind of can give me that slap in the face of like, get back to it. Don't give up. Get back to it. Don't give up. You got a daughter to feed. <laughs> you know? awesome. So um, absolutely finding what works for you and and being able to tap in and draw from from 
the um, that superhero, honestly, within you that that will keep you going no matter what. And then give yourself permission. I give myself permission to make to make mistakes, to not get it. I don't I didn't have a business background when I started this business, so. I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. I focused on a lot of the wrong things and I just keep chucking along because I see other people have made mistakes and I try not to be too hard on myself. Speaking of making mistakes in those first few months when you were growing your business, what is some advice that you can share or things to avoid so that people don't make those same mistakes? Ooh, yeah. So th- that's, you know, I've, I heard it a lot and didn't really quite pay attention to this in the beginning. Um, but now I'm kind of like on the bandwagon and I'll tell people the same thing. <laughs> I say, don't focus so much on what it should look quote, should look like, right? Um, You don't have to have the website. You don't have to have the business cards. All of these things, yes, have a purpose. Um, And yes, it's nice to have something to refer people to. But one of the things I learned, and, and, and that piece in particular, for me personally, held me back for years, Chelsea. Chelsea, I, I was so caught up in the first thing I was caught up in was what it should look like and, and trying to make it that way before I got started. Right. Yeah. And then I, and then once I had some stuff in place and now a lot of time, years literally has passed, then I was too afraid to get out there and say, Hey, I'm a coach. This is what I do. And so now that I, who's going to even see the website if I'm not telling anyone about <laughs> my about my position or what I do or what I love doing? How am I going to get clients? How am I going to get referrals? You know, so those are some of the things for sure. In the beginning months, I would say uh, uh, absolutely try. It's hard because there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of noise, online noise now, and you're, you're, the compare and despair syndrome is big. Um, and I get that. But when you're talking about what your purpose is, and if you really behind that purpose is to serve people, to help people, whether it's a product or a service, think about what it takes. Um, and so when you finally get out there and tell people, start off with what's comfortable for you. You don't have to have this big marketing agency. Uh, kudos for you if you have money and, and you can invest in that way right off the bat. But if you can't, and I, I was one of those people who did not, was not able to, um, just start sharing what it is that you do, why you do it. Ask people to help you get the word out and they absolutely will do it. And then what it came down to, a lot of people weren't asking me about my certification. A lot of people weren't asking about my website. They may have checked to see if I had one, but they weren't asking about it. And um, depending on where I was, they got a business card or if it was just a referral and over the phone, they they never saw my business card. Um, But we would have a phone conversation. I had a phone. I had a way to um, speak with them and and make sure that they were going to have a good experience with me from beginning to end. And then when I had my first client, Chelsea, I said, I need a way for them to pay me. (laughs) (laughs) So it was like, I had all these other beautiful things, but like, uh, how do they pay me? And so I literally the night before scoured the internet, looked at a free groups, asked for a few recommendations and then created an account. And it was it was fine. And the client had did not know anything at all about, about the behind right. right behind the scenes chaos. <laughs> so so again, you know, think about what's important, what your ultimate goal is, and um and then of course building on those things and getting your systems together. All of that's still a work in progress, even for me um at this stage. You're, and that's one of the things about entrepreneur um going into the entrepreneur space. You you can continuously learn. It's the fun part. You're learning. Um, you're going to be making investments. They're not always going to work out. But if you shift that mindset, again, your mindset from employee to entrepreneur, or I had, this was my side gig for a while, while, while I was working nine to five and knowing how to make this work for you and what the ultimate purpose of all this is, then you can, you can avoid wasting a lot of time. 
Stop being a scattered, overwhelmed business owner and get your projects in order once and for all. I recently switched my business over to HoneyBook and now it manages all of my projects, clients, invoices, appointments, and important contracts all under one roof. I honestly don't know how I was managing before HoneyBook. I'm so excited about this tool that I'm giving away a special 50% off bonus to everyone who goes over to herpaperroot.com slash HoneyBook right now and signs up for a free trial. You'll get a free trial to test everything out and then if you decide to upgrade, you will get 50% off your first year. That's over $280 for free. So head on over to herpaperroot.com slash HoneyBook to cash in on this offer. Do you want to buy a blog that is already making money? Or maybe you want to sell your blog. In addition to running this podcast, I also run a business helping bloggers buy and sell their websites. Come and see our current listings at blogsforsale.co. And if you are interested in selling your blog with us, fill out the form there to get a free valuation where we can discover what price your blog could sell for. That's at blogsforsale.co. And a moment ago, you had mentioned Facebook groups, which I think is just awesome, a great place to find leads. What are some other places that you like to go to to find new clients? So for me, and this is an assessment that um, if someone's looking to start a side hustle or or make it their full time, you know, there's a lot of work around knowing who your target audience is, who your ideal client is. And so I've begun to realize that for me, primarily LinkedIn is where I will find a lot of engagement, a lot of client, um, a lot of coaching inquiries about the services and work that I do, as well as Facebook. So I will join groups that uh, where career changers, job seekers are getting tips, getting advice, or just sharing, just kind of assisting each other, sharing information or giving support and, and encouragement to other job seekers, for example. And where I can lend my expertise, I will do so. Um, and I find that when you do that, coming from a place, again, a place of service and not trying to like, you know, conquer someone and make your next dollar, um, that's very off-putting to anyone. One, but the opportunities will come. People will just, if they liked what you said or found it motivational or inspirational, they will reach out to you to find more about what it is that you do or, or you can offer, you know, to answer any further questions that they might have. So... I do Twitter. I'll just give impromptu updates about what's going on in the business and maybe some behind the scenes. But as far as um, where I will engage with potential clients and just people that that I've been where they are and want to offer support, it's Facebook groups um, and LinkedIn for me primarily. I haven't ventured into Instagram yet. I'm sure there's people probably slapping me on the hand about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so true. And it's like you're saying, some people think that they have to be on every platform, they have to be everywhere, exactly. but you really don't. You just have to be where you want to be and where your clients hang out and what makes sense for your business. You don't have to overexert yourself trying to be everywhere all the time. Exactly, exactly. And the more targeted you can be, you. I love when someone says, oh, if that's what you're looking for, Crystal's your girl, mm -hmm. you know, so people, your messaging will be a lot clearer and this is going to grow and evolve, but your messaging will be clearer. You'll know where your people, where your tribe is, and they'll know where to find you. People will, will start sending people to you, the referrals. And so, yeah, you're absolutely right. And when you're, when you're in a thousand places at once, in my opinion, something gives a little bit, yeah. right? Earlier on in our chat, you were mentioning some of your services and you mentioned how you help people prepare for job interviews. And that is something that I think so many people get stressed out about. Is there any tips that you could share for how someone could prepare confidently for their job interview? Mm -hmm, definitely. So interviewing is one of my favorite topics. So I, you know, just feel free to cut me off if I go off on this. <laughs> yeah, go for um, it. I love interview preparation um, because it just really, people get motivated um, and once they have a clarity around the purpose of interviews and an understanding of the questions that they're being asked and then the preparation that comes with it. Um, and it's so rewarding to see them feel really good about an interview. So um, one of the things I'll highlight is that it's a lot of prep. It's about the preparation. Um, so, well, first, let me back up. First, it's about understanding, of course, those common questions um, and even some of the not so common questions, but 
really getting to the heart of what an employer is asking. So for example, a common thing, uh, uh, the first question might be, tell me about yourself, right? Um, and people take this, like, and they, that conversation goes on and on, and it goes left, and you're starting way back when, and you're reiterating your whole resume, um, and you've lost them. You've lost them out of the gate. And so understanding that when an employer is asking, tell me about yourself, for example, that they're really kind of, they, they've seen your resume, they've read your resume or at least glanced at it. They know your role. They probably can rattle off the responsibilities and duties that you have in that position already. So they're really trying to get an understanding of your skills and experience overall, who you are, what you've done, who you did it for, and how, what value you can bring to them, right? And so when I prep someone on tell me about yourself question, in just a few sentences, you're giving a snapshot of who you are as a professional and including your skills and experience that are directly related to the job position that you're applying for, because that's the other key. You, Some people will walk out of the interview and it's like, man, that guy was really nice. We had a great conversation. Yeah, but did you sell yourself on the position? <laughs> Right. So coming back to what value can you bring to the employer? So in the end, after you talk about yourself and what you've done, wrapping it up with, you know, and I would love to bring my experience and background to this position for your company. Right. A great way to tie it all in and bring the interviewer. If you lost them a little bit, bring them back to the whole purpose of the interview. So understanding what's really behind the questions when they ask you, what's your greatest weakness? Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> right. For no one loves that question. And so understanding what they're really looking for when they ask that question will help you then prepare. And that's the other big tip I would have. The understanding of the questions, what they really mean, and then to it's all about the preparation. Half of the questions that you are going to be asked can be prepared for well in advance so that whatever interview you go on, you can be 90% of the time prepared already with the work that you would have done. Being able to give examples, clear cut examples um, of what it is that you've done and how you've contributed in some way during the time of your career or at, at your job. Being able to articulate that in a structured and organized but personable way, a way that still feels authentic. I don't want anyone to go into an interview kind of feeling like a robot or with a script. <laughs> you know, that's the other thing no scripts, no robot action, um, but being prepared and practicing would be my biggest tips for interview prep. Oh, yeah, because people, even when you're walking into the room for your interview, those nerves, like, <gasps> if you can channel those nerves as adrenaline and push forward. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I just actually did a, a post on the nonverbal cues, right? Because the nerves, the nerves are going to come. Um, and those don't go away. So and even if you're particularly confident, you still might question, you know, did I answer that question right or not? Um, and so being able to go in so behaviorally and just with your body, maybe you need to take a pause before you answer. And a good way to transition into that is, oh, good question, John. Um, let me just take a second. Just give yourself a second to take a breath and then answer the question. It will help you just calm the nerves a little bit. The employers, they get it. it as long as you're not sitting there with like, you know, uh, crisscross applesauce, like go, about to go into Zen mode <laughs> you know, before a question, like they get it. They want you to be thinking. They want you to be uh, thoughtful with your answers. Um, and so just transitioning in that way and taking a breath to give yourself a second before your answer can definitely um, be one of the ways in which to uh, help the nerves. Sitting up on the edge of your seat, um, employers love that. Like they, they feel like you're really engaged um, and it's a good way to start establishing a rapport if it's an in-person interview. If it's a, on a phone interview, just smile. Like you can test this out tomorrow, call your girlfriend up and just start smiling during the conversation. They'll be able to tell you're smiling and that you're like relaxed or enjoying the conversation. Uh -huh. Same Thing go, right? Same thing goes for an interviewer. It's like they will feed off of your vibe. And if it's someone who's a little more stoic, a little more, you know, down to the down to business, that's fine too. Your preparation will carry you and kind of just meet them where they're at. 
you know, and um, and the nerves will be will will be at bay just enough to get you to that next round. <laughs> well, Crystal, thank you so much for coming and chatting about this today. It's been really helpful. And where can our listeners connect with you? Oh my goodness. So thank you so much. So um, you can find me at shapeyoursuccesscoaching.com. Also, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm pretty heavy uh, with posting and engaging on LinkedIn. You can certainly see some live videos too I started to do on LinkedIn. I have a Facebook page, Shape Your Success Coaching. Come on and, and like and follow, get some good, good tidbits. And then lastly, I just want to let everyone know about my new job search and career success labs. I just started this group coaching program and I already had a couple of women going through the program and one has been successful in landing her a job. So I'm super excited to, to start promoting and getting the news out more about this. So anyone looking, if you're a job seeker or a career changer, just reach out. It doesn't have to be fancy smancy, just any number of these ways. Reach out to me. We'll have a chat and I'll give you personalized recommendations on where on how to move forward. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. If you would like to work one-on-one with Crystal, go and check her out at shapeyoursuccesscoaching.com and you can find out about her job search and career success coaching program. And we've also got the link in the show notes at herpaperroot.com slash show notes. So you can go and check that out right away. Crystal, thank you again for being here. Thank you. It was my pleasure and I had a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the Her Paper Root podcast. We hope you found this episode helpful. If you did, please say so by leaving us a review on iTunes and be sure to share this episode with your friends. For more entrepreneurship resources and to connect with Chelsea, swing by herpaperroot.com. Now go make something.